Let's go over to our man, Mr. Dave Marzer, as we do each and every Monday at the top of the hour, folks. Each and every other Monday at the top of the hour. Dave is the managing director and head of product at Direction.com. And real easy to get to as you're on our website, folks. Just hit that banner and Direction spelled D-I-R-E-X-I-O-N. Dave Marzer, what's going on? Thanks for having me back, Tom. How are you? It's, it's going good, thank you. I see they, they I guess we're all, we're all still locked down here a little. A little more time, right? I think we're going to be uh, a little more time here. Markets are certainly on uh, a positive note today, though. Certainly, was especially seeing some of the laggers like small caps uh, really rallying. There's there's no doubt. You know, when we take when we take a look at the small caps too, whether it's the TNA folks or the TZA, I know uh, folks like to trade both of them. Uh, and th this small cap man, that that has been lagging for so long, Dave. So it is intriguing. You know, because fundamentalists for the last year, year and a half have been saying, hey, this is where you should be going because of the value trap, right? Well, not trap, but in general. Uh, yes. But it is intriguing because when these things move, I mean, they really move, right? Yeah, I mean, from a fundamental perspective, you're absolutely right. Small caps have been on a favor, not just for the last year, maybe five, ten. If you go back, small caps are supposed to outperform large caps over large periods of time, especially in economic booms like we had been in. Yes. Uh, now, many people are looking for signs of small cap life really to lead the rally uh, higher as a true sign that maybe the bottom that we saw on March 23rd okay. is gonna be in place. What we've seen with TNZ and TNA is many people are just focusing on the S&P 500. So looking at XPXL and XPSS, but now TNA and TZA are seeing a lot more activity again, uh, not just today, but as people are looking to judge whether small caps are going to be able to continue to leg higher from here. Yeah, I know. And we, we've seen it in our trading room, too. It's intriguing. Hey, can we talk a little bit about, you know, we had the financials last week. And so when we're talking about the FAZ or the FAS, I mean, there's, there's, it, it, this is so much different than the last time in 2008 because, of course, that was the banks that were in trouble. The banks, you know, basically the conduct to get money out to the public now. So a whole different trade. Yeah, exactly. Exactly right. So the last crisis was really a financial led crisis. You know, this is a health crisis. It's very yes, different. Right. So many, you know, whether you're looking at Wall Street strategists or other folks, I think the playbook that historically we've used in crises certainly appears different. Right. We just talked about small caps, financials last week, you know, really, really weak earnings, energy, weak earnings. You have some big energy names coming out this week uh, with Exxon and Chevron. Uh, so in our opinion, the bellwether names, as they always matter in earnings, are going to matter even more from here, which is, I think, one of the reasons why we're starting to see um, big moves in uh, FAS, FAZ, uh, in the energy space, of course, uh, ERX and ERY uh, to play bull and bear in energy. Those are two names that we continue to see increased activity in uh, and expect to see that going forward. Now, this is, this is great. Let, let's talk about this a little because there's been a huge amount of confusion, not with any of your ETF structures, but the USO, meaning th this past week and a half, okay? And what I want you to get, folks, because I've been talking about ExxonMobil and Chevron quite a bit because it's pretty amazing that these guys are off the bottom and oil was still negative, right? And so, folks, when we're talking about the ERX or the, uh, uh, the, the, the bull one or the bear one, the bottom line is that you want to understand that you really do have the energy select that's part of the holdings and then you got some cash in there, right? Is that, that's what's inside those holdings, right? Yeah, that's exactly right. So it's important to separate a product uh, like USO, which is futures based, tra tra tracking the actual commodity. So in that case, uh, well, there's been some changes, but effectively it's West Texas Intermediate. Yes. In the case of ERX and ROI, the focus here is on energy companies. Right, so those are your names, like Chevron and Exxon, that would be in that particular basket. Yeah, which is pretty cool because what what we have had uh, is that when you get these turns in the marketplace, uh, it's it's pretty neat when some of these are coming off lows. Like, uh, would it, well, if we can just switch to bonds for a second, because I know. Uh, I actually have the uh, TBT and the we went from uh, one to ten last week, right? Yeah, so uh, th you know, that, that's another space exactly where we've seen massive moves uh, in the tre uh, yeah. uh, in treasury bond, treasury note space. Uh, and, you know, we most recently had some share splits actually 
in that particular, uh, in, in, in some of those particular funds. And we, you know, it, what's amazing about the bonds, Dave, is that, I mean, they went sideways. They haven't done anything yet. But this is the first time I've been bearish in bonds in like 10 years, man. So we'll see what happens. I mean, it's, it's, like, it's like a close one, man, I, you know, because it's like, okay, we know we're in trouble. Uh, it, it's going to be intriguing watching this whole thing shake out, no doubt. Well, I think uh, what's interesting, bonds in particular, and I even say an asset class like gold, if you look at the trailing one-year returns, they've really front-run some of this. Um, yes. So a lot of those gains were baked in, which is one of the reasons why, again, if you look at that playbook, it's not behaving exactly as you might expect it to be. doesn't mean we're not going to see uh, any, any changes or retesting of lows from here. But again, this is a different type of crisis. We're going to learn a lot uh, as this is the busiest week of earnings, right? 40% of the S&P 500 reporting this week. Yes. Um, so traders are going to have to you know, stay attuned to all really the, the micro news.